So how did Slant 3D actually come to be? We're going to give you a little bit of the story in the background here. So Slant 3D um, was officially founded in 2019, but it actually existed several years before that um, as part of a different company called Slant Concepts. Slant Concepts was a product design firm. And as a product design firm, we would get clients to come in, uh, they'd have some idea, we would create prototype um, and help them with the manufacturing of it. Uh, in addition to the clients, uh, the team at Slant Concepts would occasionally create our own type of products, um, things that we thought we were interested in and, and wanted to pursue in some kind of a way. So we worked very closely with platforms like Kickstarter, um, and all, and obviously use 3D printing for prototyping. In about 2017, uh, late 2016, early 2017, there was a project that we started um, that came about quite accidentally. I went home uh, for the weekend and we were in between large projects at work. So I designed a small 3D printed robot arm that used some micro servos, brought it into work, um, and it was interesting. It was kind of a neat idea. So what we literally did was just took a cell phone and, and filmed some demos of this robot arm uh, that were pretty nifty with the, the software and demo software that I had written up literally basically in that weekend. Um, and we posted it on Kickstarter. And that little arm was the, the name of it there was successful. It funded on Kickstarter. Um, and it was kind of a problem because since I'd made it 3D printed, um, we had made the decision to 3D print whatever were sold on Kickstarter because we thought we'd sell a few of them. Uh, the problem was that with that Kickstarter and with subsequent orders after, um, it was actually quite a popular kit. Um, and if we had known about that popularity ahead of time, we probably would have considered molds more heavily. Because at that time in history, 3D printing wasn't a scale option, but we were now stuck uh, printing this product. So what we did was uh, we were like, okay, well, we're committed. We got to 3D print this stuff. Um, so we, we bought a number of printers just straight off of Amazon and uh, started producing the little arm kits. And we fulfilled that first Kickstarter. In that process, um, at the time, I was very negative about 3D printing. I didn't like it. I didn't want to have to do anything with it. Um, but while we were producing the little arm, we were able to really analyze the economics and the scale and the capabilities of FDM printers and also shop around with what was available in the market. Because when the little arm was funded, we looked around at all the print farms and had quotes done and everything else because we didn't want to produce these parts. Um, and none of them worked. None of them were economic or reliable enough. So we knew we had to do it ourselves. We were forced to do it ourselves, um, even though we didn't want to. But we created uh, a small print farm to produce these kits. And Little Arm was popular enough that we did subsequent iterations on that product line. We did the Little Arm Big and uh, the Little Bots and so on and so forth. All kinds of different STEM robotics kits came out of this. Um, and we used those kits as a way to fund and develop the print farm. Because when we did that first campaign and we fulfilled those first kits, we were able to identify what the issues with printing were. With, with printing were. Um, the main problem was the fact that uh, printers were just too manual. Everybody who had print farms had a bunch of printers up and down um, that people would manually remove parts from. So we knew that to be really scalable for like the little bots kits, you had to eliminate that manual labor. People could not stop and stare at a machine for 12 years. Now, this is a very difficult problem. And this is a problem that we continue to struggle with depending on what a part is today, even as we produce thousands of parts. Um, but at that point, it was just like, okay, we need a machine that is physically able to eject or be self-automated. Um, so we worked on that and then we were like, okay, the reliability of these machines is absolutely awful. So we went through and we boiled down, okay, what is a 3D printer? What does it need to be useful? Uh, and what does it need to be able to do to produce a reliable part? And we focused on that. So we ended up, uh, we ran the, the off the shelf printers for a little while. 
Uh, and then we designed our own and started iterating it. Well, we found a kit that we liked of a style of printer that we liked, and then we grabbed that. And then those weren't quite right, so we started iterating on the design and we started building the print farm. All the while, LittleBots, as a group of products, was able to fund the development of that print farm. Uh, they were a reliable enough product with reliable enough cash flow to where we were able to pay for all this R&D we were doing with how to 3D print lots of parts. Um, and then, But then in 2019, uh, Slant 3D, as a component of the company Slant Concepts, grew to a point uh, where we had clients coming in and using our print farm because we had excess capacity that we decided to spin it off as its own company. At that point, I went over to run Slant 3D full time and uh, the rest of the partners of Slant Concepts went on for a little while and, and kept on making stuff, but we pretty much went our separate ways and the, the product design consortium of Slant Concepts was pretty much disbanded. Um, but Slant 3D at that point became real enough and was stable enough and enough of a company to justify being its own company. So Slant 3D was officially founded, um, put down on paper, uh, and had its goal going forward of making manufacturing free and unlimited. Because we now knew it was possible. We had worked out many of the kinks. Uh, we knew what the engineering roadmap was to allow to build a 3D printer farm that could reduce thousands of parts reliably um, and at scale and affordably, even though these continue to be problems that we fight with every day. Uh, Slant 3D is, is nowhere near complete um, or perfect in any sort of way. We really have the philosophy of just be less wrong each day. Um, but that's how it kind of got started. We had this product line that needed to be produced with 3D printing. So we started building 3D printers to produce that reliably in a way that made sense to us. Uh, and then that became its own business as we used that excess capacity to produce those parts and pieces. And we continue to do that. And now we just do it a little bit more formally through uh, many different product categories and with hundreds of different clients. Um, and that's where Slant 3D came from. We had a problem and we started solving it because we could see an engineering roadmap to where mass production was possible with 3D printing. Fundamentally, there's no reason 3D printing should be any less expensive than injection molding. You have to put in electricity and you have to put in plastic and you get out a part. Those same inputs exist with molding, with machining, with printing. The difference is, is that printing doesn't have any other side processes. You don't have to create a mold. You don't have really waste material if a part is made. Fundamentally, printing should be less expensive than molding because it has fewer waste and byproducts. And that fundamental idea allowed us to push on it and knew and allow us, us to know that there was a way to push this in a direction to where it could compete with other processes and be a viable way of producing stuff. So there's kind of a long story of where Slant 3D came from and the thinking behind it and the process that we went through of deciding to do it. Um, let us know if there's other uh, topics about why we built the print farms and why we got into print farms. Or, or how we went about the decision-making process of what we do at Slant 3D. Comment down below with any sort of questions you have, and we'll try to cover as many of them as we can. Have a great day, everybody.